This morning I want to try to make a connection for us between uh, what is the main focus of the, the meeting, which is wood products and forest and uh, sustainability in that cycle to assure everybody that uh, this, this is a good thing. It's good for the state, it's good for the country because uh, forests uh, produce a lot of values. Timber is being one of those and it can, uh, not only does it produce a lot, but it can produce a whole lot more and it generates in a lot of jobs and economic activity for this state and for the country. So really happy to be a part of that. Why is the Forest Commission involved in this discussion? Uh, we have four primary areas that we work on, management, protection, uh, resource development, and then information and education. And it's really tied into all four, but most closely to the last, uh, last two. We start talking about uh, inventory of wood supplies and creating jobs, uh, water quality, seedling, seedlings that we produce and uh, assist others with, information and education clearly you know, in that area right there. And of course management allows us to do that. Active management produces forests, keeps them healthy, and produces wood. And it's clearly stated in state code as far as what we're supposed to be doing. Our forests are uh, many and they're diverse. Looking out of here, it's quite interesting. I don't know which mountain I'm looking at here, but it's just a beautiful sight. I'm looking straight out and I see the escarpment over there, the Blue Ridge Escarpment. It's a pretty neat spot here, but of a state that's a little over 13 million acres, or a little bit more than that actually, is in uh, commercial forest. So about two thirds of the state. And if you started including urban and community forest, that number is even higher than that. That 13 is just what's actively producing uh, timber. So it's way up there. Uh, over half of that forest is hardwood, and uh, about even between pine and hardwood. About 24% is uh, planted pine plantations, and uh, that produces over half the wood supply, which tells you how important it is to be active forest managers and, and plant trees uh, to uh, get additional growth on the land and a better investment return for landowners, of which 88% of them are, are private landowners. And most of those are family forest owners, just like us sitting in the room here, not corporate. Uh, about 12% of that is uh, government. Hundreds of thousands of, of landowners, uh, 86,000 on more than 10 acres, and I think that the average is around uh, 80 acres apiece when you hit that level there. So it's a lot of landowners with a lot of parcels that are less than about 100 acres. But uh, growth exceeds harvest. We've got more wood than we've ever had in South Carolina and they're at record levels. We have, uh, of course, differences in ages of wood and different species, but all total, a lot of wood out there. And a lot of values that are also in forest. And uh, things, oxygen, wildlife, jobs, timber, aesthetics, carbon, uh, water production, quality of life. Uh, some of the little factoids in and around oxygen is that an average tree, whatever that is, I uh, uh, read this in a piece from Georgia actually, produces enough oxygen for four, a family of four for a year, so four people. Um, it consumes, an average tree will consume the carbon emitted by four cars every year. One pound of wood grown, uh, for every one pound of wood grown, you get about a pound of oxygen and about a pound and a half of carbon sequestered, pulled out of the air and put into a tree in a way that somebody can use it as lumber or plywood or, or paper or whatever. And then all the other things that kind of come along with that uh, wildlife uh, habitat comes out of uh, those forests as well. And then and, uh, many, many jobs, hundreds of thousands across the nation, and then uh, close to 100,000 here in South Carolina. And water quality, over 60% of the water that we drink and use comes from the forest, it originates from forest. That's the first filter. And people have finally found out that if you have uh, uh, good forest and vegetative cover, you don't have to have so much uh, <clears throat> filtration at your water plants. You know, Greenville right here has a huge watershed for that very same reason. And then the quality of life. Many benefits uh, to humans, uh, kind of the Maslow's needs there. You go down to ones for, for humans, uh, food, shelter, water, oxygen, carbon, we talked about, timber, aesthetics, quality of life, and then of course to wildlife and fish, it's a very similar list. So it's uh, very, very important to the, uh, to the world. There's a cycle that we like to refer to, uh, just simply the forestry cycle. 
and uh, you can talk about the landowners and managers, the folks that have the land and those that manage the land, and then those that uh, uh, harvest the trees and process them and bring them into mills. And there are people out there that service all that, kind of keep it all going with gas, food, oil, tires, everything that you need to make that happen. And then it gets to a manufacturer that creates the high value uh, products out of a, a, a raw material called wood. And the longer that value chain is, the more wood uh, rather, the, uh, the more jobs are created. Once again, private landowners are the key. Here's a, in graphic form, you can see that uh, they own almost all of the land out here and produce almost all of the wood that we, that we use in the state. And they are the key to that supply side. And management means more timber, more healthy, more sustainable forests. And th this is a simple chart that shows how natural stands produce about a, a ton per acre per year. That means if you just harvest an area and it comes back and uh, trees come back into it, which they will, and I've always pointed out to folks, don't be worried about uh, deforestation in the South, or even in the U.S. Part, mostly, but in the South, if you don't mow your, lo your, your lawn, what happens? It's going to turn into a forest, isn't it? I mean, it's going to turn into grass and it's going to seed in, and you see an area that's been harvested, whether it's planted or not, it's coming back in trees. You can count on it. And what we have to do as foresters is try to massage that process to make it something more valuable for the landowner and valuable for society. So you can plant trees and go from one ton per acre per year in wood production to 10 or better, 10 or better. And so that really changes your internal rates of return for the landowner and the amount of jobs that you create. And here's the evidence of that. Uh, when uh, forest inventory was started in South Carolina back in the 30s, we had around uh, 11, 10 or 11 million acres of land in forests. Now we got close to 13. But look at the amount of wood that's produced. It's been uh, effectually uh, doubled since the, since the 50s and 60s. And that's because of active forest management. And that can go up even more than that. That's just skimming the surface. Many, many jobs out there through uh, wood product manufacturing, which equals demand. We have uh, almost 100 primary mills, uh, 700, over 700 secondary mills, and a lot of that is where you folks will be talking today about secondary mills and what they produce and wood products and opportunities to do more with that, to utilize more of the wood. Once again, remember that the longer that value chain goes, uh, the more jobs that are created. Uh, so what we're doing there as far as using more wood creates more jobs and keeps them in South Carolina. And we are a very fortunate state. There are a lot of states that would really, really love to have the amount of manufacturing and uh, mills that we have here in South Carolina. Because what it does, it allows people to grow more wood, create more return on their investment on their land, and then have a place to sell that wood whenever they want to sell some of it. So we need to keep that balance. And one of the ways that we know how to do that is a program called Forest Inventory and Analysis. That's FIA. Your Forestry Commission does that uh, with funds primarily from the federal government to measure those resources to know uh, how many acres of forest we have out, out there and uh, what species, what type, what sizes. And we all know that uh, to manage anything well, you've got to measure it well. And South Carolina has some of the best data in the United States as far as being up to date on their uh, forest inventory and analysis, and that's actually in, in Tim's shop. And what does all that do? It has a huge economic impact. Back in uh, 2014, we looked at 2013 data and uh, hired uh, someone to calculate uh, how much impact forestry has on the state. And it's number one in manufacturing sector in jobs and wages. That's the 90,000, over $4 billion in wages, uh, $1.5 million in uh, exports. It's the number one harvested crop. Uh, 759 million, the 90,000 jobs. And this was something interesting is that to me, is particularly being from the Charleston area, it's the number one exported commodity out of the Charleston port. So it's most, and that's primarily pulp, paper, and packaging that go out there. Number one. And what does all that mean as far as driving down to the everyday person and take a little, take those big numbers we talked about and do a little math and at the bottom line you see for every 11 log trucks you see move down the road, that's enough wood move to uh, keep one person gainfully employed in forestry, one of the 90,000 right there. So uh, 
we think you should think good things when you see that wood moving because that's somebody's job, and it's a return on a, from a, for a landowner that sold some wood. We started a project along with the Forestry Association and other partners in Clemson, and to say, well, this was back in uh, 2009 and 10. Said, what can we be in forestry by 2015? And we said, let's see how we can help the industry go to 20 billion. We were getting ready to go off into a recession. And we were thinking is that at worst, we could hold our own maybe and try to recover from the recession as fast as possible. So uh, we started out at 17.4 billion and we're hoping to get to 20 billion by 2015. Um, we believe we'll be there. We won't know. The 2015 data, the economic data will be available from the federal government in December, I believe it is, Tim, and we'll be able to uh, calculate what, whether or not we hit 20. We believe we're going to be pretty close to that. Uh, and we'll find out late in 2016. By December or January, we'll be able to hire that out and, and get it done and figure that out. But it requires a lot of work to get there and uh, try to make our industry successful. And where do we go from here? Um, we're now we're thinking that we need to have a 2020 vision. Kind of taken off on the last one, we had a 20 by 15 project. We want to have 2020 vision looking out to the year 2020. And here are the primary things we want to do is to retain and grow that primary manufacturing. Remember the 94 mills, we want to keep them. We'd like to have some more come into areas where the wood supply can, can, uh, can uh, and help it and make it happen. And uh, we have uh, some small pine diameter shortages in some areas in the state. We need to plant more trees there. We want to have more sawmill in because we got a record number of uh, sawmill, saw timber tr sized trees. We want to keep pulp and paper manufacturing. We have, we're very fortunate to have seven pulp and paper mills in South Carolina. And uh, they produce over half of that $18 billion and a very high percentage of the highest paying jobs. So we want to keep them here. Um, the, uh, the number of mills in the state has gone down, in the country has gone down, I think it's since 1990, over 40% of the pulp and paper mills have shut down or gone to other countries out of the United States. The last two pulp and paper mills were built in the United States were in the 1980s in South Carolina. So got to keep them here. Uh, always uh, working with the commission staff, just re restoring capacity we lost during the recession. Then uh, work with others like we're doing today to uh, do things like uh, bring in uh, cross-laminated timber production to this state and other sorts of production to this state to make more manufactured secondary products that extends that value chain and, and job numbers. And try to get the public to understand that this is an ideal industry. It's not one that uh, wreaks havoc across the landscape and destroys them. It's one that keeps it healthy. It keeps things green, and not only green, but in a way that uh, produces jobs and wildlife and water and recreation and all those sorts of things. So it's a good thing, and uh, it's something to really be proud of. If we keep it as an ideal industry, uh, keep moving forward, we'll continue to maintain those factors there. We talked about number ones in many, many areas and hopefully $20 billion in economic impact by January. Well, actually it might already be there, December 31st of 2015. We're either there or we're not there, but we'll find out by January. So, South Carolina Forest and Wood Products is a sustainable cycle. And uh, to use the little mantra we're going to use is wood. Ask for it. It's good for us. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and visit with you.